Here we are given this polynomial and we are going to find all the zeros. And if you have a graphing calculator, you can make a quick graph of it and then you will see that we have three real zeros. But one of them is actually an integer, the other two are irrational numbers. Hmm, so how can we solve it algebraically though? Well, it's not so easy to factor this. Mm, let's see if we can find some easy zeros that will help us tremendously because then we can do the sum division to reduce the cubic situation. Notice that last number is 1, and if this right here is 1, if x is 1, 1 plus 1 minus 2, we get 0. So, I think I'll begin by writing this down right here. Notice p of 1, which is going to be 0, right? because 1 to the third power minus 2 times 1, plus 1, this is 0. So 1 is a 0, and this means, so I'll just put this down, this means x minus 1, this right here is a factor of it, is a factor of p of x. So we can just go ahead and divide this by that, and this is so nice, when we divide x by, when we divide this by x minus a number, we can just use the syntactic division. So have a look, right here. Write down the coefficients, we have 1, and there's no x squared, so that will be 0, and then negative 2, and then lastly we have 1. And because we are dividing this by x minus 1, so put down the 1, right? put down the 1 on our side right here, or you can also use this 1, same thing. You just have to remember to do the opposite. Here we go. Bring down this number, which is 1, and we take this times that, and we put it here. 1 times 1 is 1, and we add. 0 plus 1 is 1. Continue. 1 times 1 is 1, and we put it here. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Lastly, take this times that, and we put it here. It's negative 1, and we end up with 0. The very last number here is remainder. It has to be 0 because we know this is a factor. So this means we know that p of x right here can be written as this times this. And this right here is the, co these are the coefficients for the quotient. So let me write it down for, for you guys. So now we can say p of x is equal to x minus 1 times x squared because the the power goes down by 1. So this is 1x squared, and then x, and then no x. So x squared, and then plus x, and then minus 1. All right, now to find the zeros, of course, we'll just say we set this to be 0. We make the first factor equal to 0. I know, that's 1 already. Done. Now we make the second factor equal to 0. So we have x squared plus x minus 1, and um, Let's use the quadratic formula because this is an odd number in the middle. So a is 1, b is 1, c is negative 1. And I will remind you the quadratic formula is x is equal to, let me put it down here, negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. I know a lot of you guys like the quadratic formula, so you have to remember that. Remember it so you can use it. If you don't remember it, we cannot use it, of course. Okay, here we go. x is equal to negative b, which is negative 1, plus or minus square root, b square, which is 1 square, and then minus 4ac. a is 1, c is negative 1, all over 2 times 1. 1, right, 2 times a. Okay, negative 1 plus or minus. For the inside here, that's 1 square, which is 1, and then minus minus is positive, and then just 4, right? So altogether, we have a 5 inside, and then we have that square root, and we divide it by 2. So, I will write this down for the final answers. We have a total of three zeros and they are all real. The first one is one. The second one, I will just write it out for you. 
negative 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 and last the negative 1 minus square root of 5 over 2 yep this right here is it of course you could have written both of them as that but I just want to show you that uh, we do have three real zeros like this this is it